Firstly, what we do have at the moment is undertaking a review of not only the Faguna Rohingya Structure Plan, but also a number of other key underpinning strategies that are going to inform that, such as our open space strategy and our social infrastructure strategy. But I'll just give a quick little discussion around where this stuff sits um, within Council, just to give everyone a bit of an idea and where it all goes through from here. So obviously that's our structure plan there up on the screen. Um, good 76 page document and if anyone's ever a bit bored there's also about a four or five hundred page document on our uh, on our website as well with all the underpinning technical information uh, but importantly it doesn't sit in isolation the whole idea as a structure plan is it's talking about how we wish to see the future of Faguna and Malinga play out on the ground but it also sits there and comes through and sits underneath a lot of other important documents that we resolve with members of our community such as towards Albury 2050 which deals with about how the whole city wishes to see and what the citizens of Albury would like to see now and into the future for Albury 2050. Um, plus also some of those other suite of documents that we get in our local strategic planning statements, uh, which gets a lot of other planning documents, which are relevant to this, such as our local environmental plan, development control plan, et cetera. Um, as I said, the structure plan is not a document just by itself. There are a number of documents that inform it both within the structure plan itself, but importantly sit outside the structure plan like a couple of others I mentioned earlier. So some of those structure plans, some of those documents we've been working on previously and they're not that old, and then others we're working on currently at the same particular time. So we've got things like the drainage strategy, the river and a highway, Brella Road strategy, our cultural heritage study, a number of those other things, our, our housing strategy was mentioned earlier by the Mayor. Those are key documents the council's done, consulted with the community and key stakeholders over the last few years. Um, but we also, as I said, we also got a number of current concurrent strategies we're working on at the moment. So there are a couple of the key strategies that all go in to the mix of the structure plan. And the idea around that just makes only where it's not in isolation. It is over quite a number of areas of, of our city and also, most importantly, not just Aubrey City results as well. There's a number of other government agency strategies that also tie into this and also other stuff that we've done in the past. And the key thing about the structure plan is it is a high level document. The idea is it sets that key framework for how we see the rollout of the Faguna Willinga growth area over that 40, 50, 60 years life of the plan. Um, as was mentioned earlier, it was developed over 18 months, over 2011, 2012, and adopted in early 2013. Um, and a lot has changed since then, which we need to come into this review. So why are we undertaking that review? 10 years is a long time. It's a long time in any, any period of life, but in the planning sphere and development sphere and how the community has changed over that period of time, and it's a substantially long time. In the life of Faguna, as mentioned earlier, it's a substantially long time. Faguna's gone from that 6,500 people to that 11,000 people. So the community itself has almost doubled. Expectations of our community do change. Government legislation changes, planning ideas change, economics behind development change. A whole variety of things do change in that component. So that's why it's important to have the review and take into account some of those bits. And the idea is to have enough of a, a review and, a, and an outcoming plan that's still gonna be flexible enough that it can withstand some of those changes, but still gonna need some reviews into the future as well to make certain it's tracking along what we expected and the outcomes are what we anticipated. Again, the objectives of the review won't read into that into, into full detail, but again, the whole idea is to come up with an up-to-date plan, and we want the plan not just to look at what we see with Faguna Willinga coming at now, but importantly, what we want to see it for future residents and existing residents who will also be future residents. So again, the idea is that the plan will look at that 20, 40 and 60 year horizons. Uh, just a bit of a reminder around the study area and how large it is. And the fact that also that some of that study area also includes some of the existing areas of Faguna and how that integrates in, but then some of the areas that are currently under development in Faguna, but then also there's areas that are still to be developed. In um, regards to, to the engagement, the thing we really want to, to, to stress for everyone is this is the start of the process. So we're not here today to say, here's where we think the review has gone and here are the outcomes. The really idea of today is to start that dialogue, to get information from, from everyone who's here today. Today's not your only chance. If you go away and you think there's some great feedback, make sure you get it to us at any point in time, happy to have ongoing dialogue. 
Um, but importantly, we're at this early stage. Um, but it's not the only time that we're, that we're speaking to people. So we want to make certain that we understand we have been listening to what people have told us over the last three, five, ten years and those other engagement scenarios I talked about, those other plans and policies Council's been working on and strategies. So there's a number of those key themes that we have taken out of that that are going to inform what the outcomes are from the structure plan review. But it's around those key themes of heritage, environment, transport and movement, community infrastructure and housing density and character. It's not to say it's the only thing, they're the only things a structure plan review is looking at, but they're the key elements. Again, uh, we went to our community earlier this year and asked them to give us some feedback about what they thought were the key issues. Uh, we got a, a very a good response. We're very happy with the level of response. And those, key, those are the most important, the top eight ranked that our community is saying to us that they would like the structure plan to start to provide some guidance for and around how those issues are addressed. So some of those relate to traffic, infrastructure and environmental issues. Again, correspond with those four key issues that we're looking at today, later this afternoon. Uh, I did just quickly touch base on the fact that um, we had a community information session on Tuesday. We had two of them. Um, if anyone's been involved and in, in engaged in any type of strategic planning, it can be very difficult to get your community there when they're do dealing with conceptual ideas, not dealing with an application next door that they can see as, as concrete in plans. So we were very happy with over 100 people to come through. There's about 80 in the first session, 50 to 60 in the second session. Because um, it does so that the community of Faguna is very interested in having the conversation. They are wanting to be engaged. And what that means for us as the industry leaders and, and developers and provision of infrastructure is that we have a community that wants to be engaged, so let's have a conversation with them. I touched on this there earlier, just talking about the structure plan review and where we are and just reinforcing that we're right at that very first stage now. Later this year, we'll come back and we'll have some more conversations around where things might go, what are our options, test some ideas. Um, then the idea is early, next, early mid next year to have an actual draft plan and then have it exhibited in that middle period of, of next year and, and adoption. So they're the ideas of the timeframes. Obviously, there's still development that's occurring at the moment and that will still occur in context of the existing structure plan, but there may be some ideas that we can get out of these early processes that can be incorporated into any of those developments. So that was it from my particular end. So I will now throw us over to Mira and to Connor from Nikon, who will then talk to you through the, the structure plan. Good morning, everyone. My name is Mira Jafari. I'm the Director of Policy and Urban Analytics from Planning Consultancy Mekon, and I'm joined by my colleague, Connor McKenzie. We've been engaged by the Albury City Council to undertake the review of the uh, Thaguna Willinga uh, structure plan. We're very pleased to be here with you today to uh, introduce ourselves, to talk to you a little bit about the approach we're taking, some of our initial observations, and also, most importantly, to hear your thoughts in terms of your expectations and your aspirations for the future. Um, of the area. So we thought we'd uh, start by just introducing our project team. Our team is a collaboration between Mekon, McGregor, Coxall and Projectura. Um, Mekon is a national planning consultancy. We operate across uh, multiple Australian jurisdictions. Our headquarters um, is based in Sydney, but we do a lot of work in regional New South Wales and as a sign of our commitment to the regions we've recently uh, established an office in parks that predominantly serves um, Western New South Wales. We do a range of planning services to both uh, the public and private sector. Our team, Policy and Urban Analytics, primarily works for government sector clients. We do a diverse range of work uh, from you know, long-term land use strategies at a regional level all the way down to uh, local employment and housing strategies and precinct plans. McGregor Coxall are um, an international firm. Uh, they specialise in urban design, landscape architecture, environmental design and biolab. Uh, we don't have, unfortunately, representatives from McGregor Coxall, but they've been making significant contributions to our investigations so far. That's just an overview of our team. I won't spend too much time on this, but suffice to say that we're supported by a multidisciplinary team of subject matter experts in various aspects of planning, urban design, 
um, engagement and uh, uh, environmental design as well. Uh, we just thought we'd uh, showcase some of our relevant experience. We've done quite a lot of uh, pre seq plans which are of similar nature and scale which we wanted to showcase and uh, of course we've done a lot of work um, in regional New South Wales and in Albury and, and the surrounding area. There's been significant learnings out of all of these processes and we seek to apply these learnings as we progress our review of the uh, Thuguna Wilbinga structure plan. We're extremely excited about this uh, project. Um, we're excited because of the competitive advantage of Albury and uh, really the scale of opportunity that it offers. Albury is already a fantastic place. It's a livable place and it's already a magnet for um, economic activity and for investment. It's got all the right ingredients to enable it to continue to be a very significant um, regional city. It's got the right ingredients in terms of the strategic assets. It's got the um, education precinct, which is uh, where we're at at the moment. It's got the regional jobs precinct, the health precinct, the airport, and these are all the uh, assets that Albury can um, leverage to um, enable it to grow and cement really its position as a successful regional city. And we now have the opportunity to set the right structure uh, to create the backbone of a very livable and well-functioning city. It's an ambitious project. We know that council doesn't want to settle for just the business um, as usual. We know that they want to deliver great places with the right amenity, with the right social and uh, community infrastructure. And uh, we're extremely uh, passionate to be involved in the process. But there are some challenges too. I think one of the big challenge, biggest challenges to me is just the size of the precinct. It, there's a significant uh, amount of land that has been zoned and uh, multiple development fronts really uh, present a challenge in terms of servicing all the rapidly growing communities. And by that, I mean, we need to think about the enabling infrastructure, your sewer, your water and your roads in a time manner. We also need to think about our community infrastructure, our schools, our education facilities, our parks and open spaces, and we need to make sure that these facilities are in place as the communities grow. Uh, we need to talk about, uh, think about con connectivity, how do we encourage uh, better walkability within the uh, precincts, but also how we can create the links uh, back to the more established areas of, um, of the place. Uh, we talked about the unique environmental features that we need to protect and enhance, and in fact, we want to see these environmental features being embedded um, in the design of the precinct. Uh, so the structure plan was, as I think it was touched upon, it was prepared about 10 years ago now, following the rezoning of um, the area. Uh, it was anticipated at the time, as is now, is uh, that, that the area was going to be the primary greenfield area that was going to accommodate uh, a population of about 50,000 people over the course of about uh, 50 years. Since then, significant growth has already occurred. Uh, there's been about 2,000 new dwellings, uh, 5,000 uh, new people living in the area, and I understand about uh, 1,400 approved subdivisions that are in the pipeline. So it's a very rapidly growing area. We think that the structure plan sets a very robust framework for the growth of the area. The plan was prepared based on um, a significant body of technical information. So we're not here to reinvent the wheel. Uh, we are here to uh, review. Uh, think about the new trends that have uh, come to light since the plan was prepared. Think about the fresh data that we have available to us, including the new census data, but also some more detailed uh, data in terms of the, some of the environmental features of the area and so on, which we will talk about. Um, there's been new um, strategic direction that has been set by the New South Wales government, but also uh, by council, and we need to make sure that the future of the area is aligned with this new uh, planning direction. And of course, we need to make sure that the structure plan is still aligned with the aspirations of the community. So this is a review exercise. 
Uh, the next slide talks a little bit about some of the trends that are happening that are important for the area. These trends were developed by the CSIRO and they were included in Council's local strategic planning statement. So if I can just uh, quickly uh, run through some of them. We know that resources are limited and demand is increasing. So there's really significant demand for all types of infrastructure and we need to think about how we can go about um, delivering um, or accommodating this demand using alternative or more innovative ways of planning and delivering infrastructure. Uh, climate change is increasing the risk of um, environmental hazards, uh, things like um, you know, heat wave, bushfires and um, flooding. So we need to think about how we can create a, a communities that are resilient to these significant um, weather event, e events. Uh, we've got an aging population and we need to understand what that means in terms of developing the type of housing that is needed and how we can enable people to age in place. Digital technology is changing the way we work, we live and we interact with place, so it's important for us to understand what that means for the places and the type of digital infrastructure that we need to think about and deliver on. Uh, there are shifts in the economic structure. We need to think about, you know, some industries uh, sectors are emerging or some industry sectors are evolving. Uh, so um, we need to be aware of the potential implications of this. So do our planning controls actually allow enough flexibility for the evolution of, um, of the industries? And as we know, COVID has reinforced certain trends and uh, change certain trends. Uh, most important of all is the trend of working from home and um, increased demand for local services, but we need to make sure that the uh, places that we're delivering um, actually respond to that new way of uh, living and interacting with uh, place. So I might stop there and hand it over to Connor to talk about the approach we're taking. Thanks, Mira. Hi everyone, my name is Connor McKenzie. Um, as Mira mentioned, I'm an Associate Director at Meco. We're really looking at an environmentally led design approach with, the, with this precinct. Um, we've heard from the community that there's a desire to maintain the beautiful bushland and garden setting of Thuguna. Um, Thuguna and Willinga and the residential estates, lots of green gardens, views to the meet, green mountains. That environmental asset is such an asset for the precinct. Um, it's a really attractive, uh, it's, a, it's a real attractor for people to come to Thuguna, I think. Um, and what we're at the heart of that, we, we really want to embed um, caring for country as that sort of bottom-up um, approach to design. So we've got some great new studies that will be um, helping us inform that review of the structure plan. We know there's been a recent update to the Aboriginal um, cultural study for the whole LGA. Um, and that'll be coming up from the sort of bottom-up in terms of those cultural principles, um, looking at some of those environmental constraints as well. So we know that there's been some updated studies, and I'll touch on those in a little bit. Um, new flooding and also just looking at sort of the topography of the site and how we can review um, in that context. We're from that environmentally led approach but we're really looking at four key themes to sort of frame our thinking so that heritage environment, transport and movement, community infrastructure and urban centres and housing and character. So within those four themes heritage environment as I'm sure many people are aware you know, New South Wales has been through a number of pretty major natural disasters in the past few years. We've seen some, a number of one in a hundred year floods across New South Wales. Um, and it's definitely something that, you know, if with being near the Murray is, is relevant in this precinct. Um, similarly as well, bushfire is a big risk all across New South Wales. So there has been a revised land use approach for flooding in New South Wales. There was a flooding inquiry following the flood. So we'll be considering um, these new approaches to flood planning in the way, in the structure plan review. Um, similarly, we know that there's new mapping identifying bushfire prone land in the precinct, so we'll be considering this as well. So these are just some of these considerations that we'll be looking to incorporate into the structure plan. Similarly, we know with the biodiversity um, requirements, there's new legislative requirements. As mentioned before, the department has um, funded a, a revised uh, ecological assessment and biodiversity assessment for the precinct. So that's um, currently being undertaken and we'll be considering those findings um, as part of our environmentally led approach, but also how can we plan around um, the potential constraints that come out, or I shouldn't say constraints, the potential assets that we can protect from that. Um, Again, as I mentioned before, there has been the citywide Aboriginal cultural heritage study. And as you can see by the map there, it really has identified a, a lot of potential um, for uh, cultural the, the cultural values there. And we'd like to protect this and really make sure the structure plan reflects this and, and cares for country with its review. 
Secondly, transport and movement. So as mentioned before, um, there is currently an integrated transport strategy that's being developed and that is expected to be exhibited later this year. So thinking about how the precinct can be both connected to the city centre, how people get around the precinct, thinking about different transport modes and how that people will be moving through the precinct in the future. We heard at the community engagement on Monday night that you know, there are some traffic issues at the moment around you know, congestion at peak times, people getting to and from schools. So how can we, re how can we think, look at the structure plan I hear, hear from the community that these are the things that are important to them and then you know, ensure that the, fu these, uh, the, the future of the structure plan can respond to that. Similarly, um, as many of you may be aware, there is currently uh, the Thaguna Link Road is going through environmental approvals, both at a state and federal level. So following the outcomes of that, we'll be need to incorporate that into the future structure plan as well and understand how that um, road will then also impact the, the potential review that we're undertaking. Similarly as well, as an outcome of the integrated transport strategy, with 50,000 more people living in Thaguna and Willinga, thinking around if everyone's got a car and everyone's got to go to the shops, is that going to be increasing those traffic problems? So how can we provide a really safe transport network that gives you an alternative choice to get you know, local trips, trips into the city? If you've got a separated cycle path or a really safe shaded cycle path and you've got an electric bike, maybe that's an, a really great transport model for you. So how can we think about the structure plan in you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years that this might be a, a, more, um, a more attractive way of, of getting around Thaguna Willinga. I think we'll chat about this more today as well, but the, the draft social infrastructure and open space strategies are being prepared by CRED. Um, so that's happening in parallel and the findings uh, of those studies will, will feed into our development of the structure plan. So this is really looking at your parks, your open spaces, your community facilities, places where people meet. How can we incorporate those into the structure plan? How can we plan our centres around them? And how are they connected with things like your education facilities? There aren't many precincts in New South Wales where you've got a TAFE, a university, schools, a really great natural environment. So kind of thinking about all of them working together and how can we capitalise on the assets that are already here and then plan for really, really great places in the future. Um, as I'm sure will be mentioned later, there has been a change in the way that the state government plans for schools. Um, as you might have seen on the structure plan, there's a number of potential school sites that are being identified. Um, school infrastructure in New South Wales has moved away from sort of the two to three to 400 smaller public schools to providing less of those but larger facilities with, uh, that provide higher amenities. So we'll have to think about that in the planning of the, of the precinct, the location of those schools and how that again relates to local centres. So I think with all this other information that we've got, you know, the new biodiversity mapping, the potential new floods, thinking about those principles of connecting with country, the new locations of schools, the social infrastructure, how does that impact our local centres? What do we need to have a successful local centre that really um, is vibrant, has enough people around it to support that local retail, but it is also easy to get in and out of, easy to get to and from, and provides those opportunity for social, social cohesion. So we'll be looking at where those local centres are proposed at the moment, if we still think they're the right place, um, and what's, what does that mean for the structure plan review? What, what is the products being delivered, like the housing products being delivered in Thaguna at the moment? Um, as you can see by the chart, um, this is in lots that have been delivered since 2013. The envisaged is from the current structure plan. This was what the expected breakdown of, of um, lot sizes would be. And as you can see, there was a, a bit more of an assumption of this sort of smaller lot size in the four to five to six hundreds. And what we're seeing is really a predominance of that sort of 1,000 to 1,400 square metre lot. And I mean, that's understandable. Like there's a, there's a desire in the community for that product, but thinking about into the future, how can we move beyond that maybe BAU housing product um, and think about providing you know, a choice for the changing needs of the community. So as touched on before by David, this is only the start of the journey. Um, we're here today to hear from you and we're really excited to have this opportunity to get early engagement. Um, we're commencing, uh, we, we've already had the What We've Heard So Far report. Um, the, as I mentioned, the technical studies are underway um, and we're at that first, first stage of the community engagement earlier and we're having the industry engagement today as well. We're gonna take all of this information and move it into our um, sort of strategy development, thinking around the way that we're going to um, approach the structure plan review, and then we'll come back again to the community and industry for feedback on that. We'll then move to, you know, sort of by mid-2024, essentially looking to, to ex exhibit a draft precinct structure plan that'll hopefully have all of your input in it, incorporate all of these studies, and that'll be taken out for um, exhibition and then for adoption and finalisation. So thanks very much for your time. Um, look forward to speak to you all later.